We're excited to have you, girl. I mean, if y'all don't know Sydney, she got a resume, honey. She, Lizzo's new reality show. She's a model in LA, been featured on Vogue, Essence, Cosmo, Daily Mail. I mean, yes, <laughs> honey, how does it feel? Is this it real feels- for you? No. So I was talking to my friend the other day about like, I was on set, I was sitting in the makeup chair and like every time I'm on set or doing something new, like I still have those moments where I'm like sitting there and I'm like, is this my life? And I'm like, why me? And I'm like, nope, why not me? Cause I deserve it. I worked hard for it, but still it's very surreal. And it's something that honestly I could have never imagined for myself. So Yeah. Oh my gosh, girl. And you are glowing. You look great. I can see like just based off your content that this is what you're meant to be doing. You can tell in the way you even approach your videos. You're just so happy, girl. You be glowing. I love it. Thank you. I gotta be. I feel like there's so much hate and negativity in the world um, that we just need to pump more positivity out in media and social media. So it's literally, it's my passion. It's what I love to do. A thousand percent agree. A thousand percent. So let's start off with the interview questions. Tell me a little bit about your journey. How'd you even like get into Lizzo's reality show? Did you have to audition? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, basically everything for me with my whole modeling, influencing, dancing career started on Instagram. So in 2017, I, um, before that I was posting other people on my social media. I started as a photographer. So I was posting other people and posting different concepts and stuff. And then finally, like 2017 I got really confident with my body and myself and I started posting myself more and within like two weeks of posting that picture Fashion Nova DM me and they were like we want to start a long-term relationship with you and then other brands saw that and then it just grew from there and once I kind of you know starting off on social media it's so easy to look at what everybody else is doing, especially if you're just getting started and don't really know like what an influencer is. So I was doing what everyone else was doing and the whole workout videos and, you know, posing in front of a mirror to take your pictures. And it wasn't sustainable for me. It didn't make me happy. It didn't feel like Sydney. So then I started doing more things that I enjoyed or that resonated with me. So I did body positive stuff and I started doing dance videos and I started doing more positive videos and content. And then that's when really the, you know, better collabs started coming in and the higher paid collabs started coming in. And the story behind Lizzo is actually crazy. I had been posted on the shade room. Right. Um, the shade room doesn't even really know this, but I really think that The shade room is kind of what brought in so many of these opportunities for me, especially when it came to Lizzo. And I DM'd her that video that y'all posted and she saw it and she was like, I'm so proud of you. And I told her, I was like, if you ever need a backup dancer, just hit me up. And she was like, best believe I'll take you up on that. So a year passes and she comes out with this show and I get a DM to audit, to apply and send in my audition video. I was scouted on Instagram and now here we are. So I I tell people all the time, like social media is really so important and, you know, making quality content that other people can resonate with. um, Because as you know, like it's really changed my life. The shade room has changed my life. So um, just put yourself out there and be confident and just own it. Oh my gosh. I love that. And I love to, I didn't even know that. Like the video helped. I mean, that's awesome. Um, Okay, so like, what's it like working with Lizzo though? I mean, how oh is my it? Gosh. So everything that you see from Lizzo on social media, that's exactly how she is in real life. She is so goofy. She is so funny. She's so fun to work with. But what really, not really surprised me, but what really like inspired me, I guess, is when you work next to Lizzo, like you really get to see how hard she works. Like, especially during the show, especially this year, this is her year. She's 
has Yiddy that's come out. She has a show that came out. She has a whole album coming out. She's about to go on tour. So she really is in grind mode every single day. So that was really awesome to see. But I think it was really cool to see how genuine and real she is. Um, Like she just called me the other day randomly and was like, hey, I just wanted to check in with you after the show. And like, if you need any help with anything. And I was like, who does this? Like, yeah, you know, so people, beautiful. when they, celebrities get to that level, it's just kind of like, oh, you know, like the show's over. I don't have to do, right. like she really cares about us. And it's really, really awesome to have somebody like Lizzo to care about you and your success. So. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. And I love to hear that. Cause I know people always wonder, or if, I mean, even not just Lizzo, but like people see that, like, it is technically a show. You are technically contracted and paid and whatever the case may be. And so technically they don't have to engage. They don't have to build a relationship with you. So for someone to go and take that extra mile, it must mean so much. Yes. Yes. Oh my Very, God. I know. Have you developed any strong, relate strong relationships with anyone else on in the cast? Oh yeah. Like we're all literally still connected. We text each other every day. We call each other like every other day. Um, so it's really like something that I didn't even know that I needed before the show. Like I have been praying, I'm so invested in my work all the time and it's hard to make genuine connections with people that, you know, are not necessarily like in the industry or understand how it works. So having like a group of like 13 sisters, it's been amazing. We can all call each other when we're going through things or especially now that things are picking up with our careers, we can get each other's opinions and stuff. So um, we talk literally every single day. So it's really nice to have that sisterhood. Oh, wow. You got a whole nother family going on behind the I know. Oh, we're playing a vacation it. right now. We're like, we got to do something for the summer. So it's really, really cool. Oh, I love that. I love to hear that. I, I'm, I am interested to know just working with the reality show and all of the just things that you hear, right? You hear all of the negative about reality shows. It's staged. It's, it puts, you know, a black community or black people in a bad light, but mm. tell me if you have that, like, I, it doesn't seem like that's what we're getting. You know, it's, it's yeah. it seem like that's the reality show we're getting. So tell me the difference between this one and ones and others in the past. Yeah. So like you were saying, a lot of reality shows now depict black women in such a negative light. Like we're fighting all the time and we're jealous of so-and-so and whatever. On Lizzo's new reality show, it's really about uplifting women, uplifting girls of different sizes. It really doesn't focus on the drama, but it kind of focuses on all of our individual stories and how much we develop throughout the season. So if you're somebody that likes to cry and be inspired all the time, this is the show for you. Um, Listen, girl, I was crying on your on your little clips that you're sending. I'm like, oh my God, this is so transparent uh, and real. Yeah, I, I even rewatched it back and I was like, gosh but it's it's just something that like really is designed to uplift people and kind of inspire people and um I personally went through a dance class I went to a dance class yesterday and somebody that was like 60 years old was like I saw the show like I gave up dancing a long time ago and it really inspired me to come back and get in the studio again and I was like oh my gosh this is what it's all about yeah so um it's really just like so different so inspiring um and so uplifting, especially for the curvy Black community. Um, it's something that we needed. And I look back mm-hmm. now and I'm like, if my childhood self saw this, like if my younger self saw this, like I would have been so sheltered emotionally from all of the negative things that people said to me growing up. Um, it's so needed. So I'm really happy that it finally came out. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. And that's awesome to hear somebody's even reaching out to you like, this helped me. And I'm sure you've gotten so many other messages and, you know, stories, you know, mm-hmm. so that that's so great to hear. Um, but I do want to talk about the most recent clip that you shared more specifically. Yeah. Um, it was raw. It was mm-hmm. a raw clip, you know, it was a very emotional um, things that people needed to hear. Um, and you talked a little bit about an eating disorder. You talked a little bit about the weight loss, I mean, the um, workout videos um, triggering you. Let's talk about that. Let's, um, yeah. let's take, let's pull those layers back. I want to know 
what triggered you and why. And then I want to talk a little bit through the eating disorder and see like, because I feel like people think eating disorders look a certain way. <laughs> that part, that part, I totally agree with you. So I'll start with your first question kind of about like, you know, why it triggered me and that whole thing. So kind of like going through my story of my eating disorder, I was somebody that grew up, I was so blessed to have parents that were super supportive and uplifting. Um, so I grew up very confident in myself. I loved how I looked. Um, I constantly was getting compliments from my parents. And I tell my followers this all the time. We're not born insecure. We're not born hating ourselves. It's when we step out into the real world where we start to question our worth or we start to question our beauty because of other people's opinions or because of how society deems bigger women or, you know, what society deems as beautiful. So, um, yeah, it wasn't really until like high school when I was the only plus size African-American cheerleader, when, you know, people started to say things about my body and say things about me and, that's when I started to like question my worth and like, you know, but being in high school, I didn't really go through that. It wasn't until college when I was prescribed medication um, for uh, ADD. So it was Adderall. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm studying well, I'm not losing things anymore. Nice. But it started to completely change my appetite. It suppressed my appetite. And I would have these crashes throughout the day mentally where I was like, I have to work out. That's the only thing that's going to make me feel normal. Yeah. Um, after about a month of that, I stopped completely. I couldn't, it just mentally was messing me up completely. And yes, absolutely. I felt like I was going crazy. Yeah. I would be like super energized in the beginning of the day, like get a lot of work done. And then by like two o'clock, I would be like, nobody talked to me. Like I completely lost my personality. Like yeah. I was so just bland and dull and ag like just agitated all the time. So I stopped taking it and I started to feel like Sydney again, but with taking the Adderall and, you know, working out, having the motivation to work out all the time and not eat as much, my cravings came back. I didn't feel the need to work out as often to manage those crashes. So I started gaining weight again. Okay. And this was around the time where I became an influencer. This was around the time where guys started coming up to me, talking to me, asking me out. Right. Um, and it was a lot, I lo I'd lost a lot of weight. I think at this time I had lost maybe like 40 or 50 pounds. Okay. And so that again with being on the medication it wasn't intentional but then once I came off of the medication I had that fear like okay like these brands want me like what if I gain weight or what if guys aren't going to speak to me anymore or people that are coming up to me saying Sydney we're so proud of you you look amazing like what are gonna what are they gonna think of me now so that's really when the eating disorder started I really really cut back on what I was eating I was counting calories heavily I was working out at least two to, two to three times a day, um, like excessively working out. Um, and I ended up getting really sick to the point even I, again, had no personality. Um, I was not going out with friends to eat. I was just, it was a really, really toxic state for me. And um, it only lasted a year, but I feel like it lasted like a lifetime because it's something that still scars me and something that I kind of like going on the show talking about it. It was something that I felt really like in a way kind of like shameful of even like going through that because it's like now I look at myself and I'm like, I'm so strong. Like, right. how did I allow myself to go through that based off of other people's opinions? And so, yeah, well, now you're not, I, you're not the first one. I know. To, yeah. And I think, I think we have to give ourselves grace. You know, we change so, there's so many seasons of us. Mm -hmm. There's so many, I mean, there, you, you had a season where you were a cheerleader in high school or you had a season where you're an influencer and now you're a reality TV show star. You're, I mean, there's so many seasons of Sydney and I want you to embrace those seasons even if they don't match up to the Sydney today because they made the Sydney today, you know? Yes, and that was something that got me through the show. like. Something that they didn't show on the show was for like 
two or three days after I was just like Jayla and I would sit in the closet and just cry like I was just like Jayla like I, because being a public figure beforehand going on a reality show people might like I felt like people were like oh we know Sydney like we know all of Sydney and it's like opening up about that I was like what are people gonna think because it's like I'm constantly like telling people to love themselves and telling people to love their body. And then I went through something like this in my past. Like, what are, gonna, what are they going to think of that? And Lizzo think actually- you're a person, Sydney. Yes, <laughs> yes. And that's what Lizzo had to remind me. She was like, you have to understand that, just like you said, this is what made you the woman that you are today. This is why you're that cheerleader. So other people don't go through the things that you go through. And I had to sit and really like take that in and digest that and understand like, this is just a part of my story. And now again, kind of like reflecting on that, like I'm in a way like really glad that that happened because it opened my eyes to, you know, really appreciating life and really speaking my truth and telling my story. So younger generations or other women don't go through what I went through. I love it. I love yeah. it, Sydney. Thank you so much. Um, the, the message at the end though of your video, I, I want to quote it because it says weight loss does not always mean someone is happy or healthy. I want to talk about that because I'm sure you've had to deal with so many and even if it's not you, I know you have no people that have dealt with so many negative comments on and offline when it comes to weight gain, weight loss. And I think that people forget that y'all are human. Y'all have feelings. Y'all are real people. Like you are someone's daughter and sister and cousin. Yes. And, you know, and so I feel like no matter what guard people have up and no matter what wall people put up as a public figure, you still care and you still have feelings like sometimes it, it might be a comment two years later that might matter you know what I mean so can you tell me if this is something that you've had to deal with and what did you do yeah so in the beginning um of like when I was on social media like I would get a lot of hate from just random people um and it really kind of took me back because I, don't, I guess what I'm trying to say is the hate never really affected me um, necessarily because I personally like I'm very intuitive of like feelings and like why sometimes people do the things that they do and I understand like looking at myself I would never just go up to a stranger and like judge them or say something about them like right. you have to kind of put yourself in the other person's shoes and realize like Maybe they're going through something. Right. Maybe they feel this way about themselves. Maybe, you know, so anytime I get hate, I'm always like, you know what, I'll take it. Because if that person feels the need to put all their anger and frustration on somebody, I'd rather it be me because I can think in that way and I can understand. Right. Um, and majority of the time, I actually love the hate because I make clapback videos and it's just more yes, content. I've me. seen them. <laughs> Please keep doing them. I love it. Okay. Uh, so yeah I love it it's like and a lot of the time too like I'll message people and that say these hateful things and I'll be like hey like I saw what you said in my comments like I really hope you're doing okay I hope your day gets better like I'm sending you love and positive energy and a lot of the time they'll come back and be like hey um you know I just lost somebody or I just went through a breakup and I didn't know that your account was real like I'm really sorry so you know, you just got to kind of understand that it's not you. Um, it's sometimes people projecting those issues onto you. And um, you just got to kind of be like, you know what, it's fine. And don't internalize it. Because I tell people a lot too, like, if you know who you are, if you take the steps on practicing who you are, whether it's self-love, affirmations, hanging out with the right people, um, doing things that make you happy, that make you love yourself, any negative thing that somebody says about you, it's just extra noise. You won't even think to believe it. Right. So right. it's just, you know, you just got to kind of take it. But I know a lot of people that have gone through um, the hate mail and the bullying. And I just would recommend just taking it in a way. I don't even know. Like, it's really hard because I used to be the type of person, too, that would be like, oh, well, screw you and blah, blah, blah. But it's not even worth it. Like, you you just really don't know what people are Get going you down through. a rabbit hole because now you're arguing with someone you don't even know. 
<laughs> yes and it's like they just come back and it makes no sense and then you look and you're like it's been 30 minutes arguing with who <laughs> and so right. yeah but I also wanted to hop back on the um question that you were talking about uh before this one you were saying how people think eating disorders look a certain way yes that is so true I there were times where I wanted to tell my friends, I wanted to tell um, people like when I was really sick and I was really in need of help. But I remember growing up and taking like life management skills and health and like learning all of these things. Never once did they talk about that in school about how it can affect anyone, especially guys as well. Like a lot of men have eating disorders. Um, a lot of bigger bodies struggle with eating disorders. So I was really scared to open up and ask for the help that I needed, especially for my family too. Although they're supportive, I thought they would have just thought like, no, you're just, you know, so it can be, it can affect anyone. Tess Holiday, who is a huge plus size model, um, like huge in the media, she also used to struggle with anorexia and, you know, people didn't believe her and people poked fun at her. So I guess, you know, this is just a reminder that anybody and everybody um, body type can struggle with an eating disorder. And it's something that should be taken serious from friends, health professionals, um, everyone so that is definitely so true that there's a stigma that people um only of a smaller size can get eating disorders and that's not true yeah and I, I was also reading I think it was like a, a couple months ago that overeating can be an eating disorder it can be a sign like mm -hmm. I think people assume like the textbook bulimia and you're like 100 pounds or you're you know um and I mean anorexic or bulimia but there are eating disorders that, to your point, look a lot different than what we've been taught and grew up. Absolutely. Now. Yeah, I actually struggled um, with binge eating disorder. Okay. And so that was initially like the first kind of trigger as well. Like when I went to the doctor, I told her, you know, I think I have ADD. I lose everything. I can't stay focused. And the doctor immediately, right when I walked in the doctor's office was like, tell me about your, you know, you get on the scale and then initially they're like, hmm. And they're like, tell me about your diet and your exercise and your eating. And I was yeah. like, I'm living my life. It's like they happy. victimize you. Yes. Yeah. And, and it, like when I went in for ADD medication, her response was, oh, well, I believe you have binge eating disorder as well, which is okay. okay. But um, and even I kind of sense that as well, like sometimes I would go through stressful situations and binge eat and overeat, whatever. Um, but she said, I get you feel like you have ADD, but I'm going to give you this medication that works for ADD and binge eating disorder. So it was basically like the doctor was trying to put a bandaid over my eating and disorder. It didn't help. With medic, it made it worse. It made it come so worse. It just opened up another issue in my life that just got so much worse for me yeah I do want to talk about doctors because I feel like you're not the first woman to tell me this I've been through it mm. it's like they don't listen to us you know they don't listen to women they especially don't listen to women of color mm. I mean we can go into so many different things, pregnancy, all of that. But I want to talk about your your situation specifically. Like, what do you do? And just for advice for people, what do you do when you're not being heard by your doctor? That's a really hard question. Um, luckily, past that, I've had really good doctors, but it has taken a while for me to find those good doctors. Okay. Um, I specifically go to all Black practitioners, all Black doctors, um, female Black doctors. I have a female Black therapist. Um, so I think it's just about like, you know, if you feel like you're not heard, if you feel like you're not being seen or your issues aren't being catered to, um, don't be afraid to like walk out and go find somebody else that will yeah. cater to you. It may take a while, but it's like you really need to learn to advocate for yourself or you could fall into a really messy situation like I did. Um, but just find somebody that, you know, 
you can resonate with that resonates with you that you know you feel has your best interest at heart um so it may take a while to find that person but do your research um just make those connections you know in your community to see like what's the best person to go to for this I know I personally have a friend group and we share each other's uh, doctors and dentists and literally everything therapists so I think it's really just doing the research and finding somebody that really cares about you and not just settling you know your health is kind of like a relationship like you can either settle and deal with it and you know either let yourself get worse or go out and really find the best person that works for you so that's my personal opinion on what to do in those types of situations I love that you said that because I've had someone tell me before like you should treat your body like a relationship like mm -hmm. especially like even when it comes to like the difference of eating healthy and working out like it has to be that's why people say it's a lifestyle it's a continuing mm -hmm. relationship it's you're you're continuing to um get to know yourself honestly like in the different seasons that you're in so i love that you said that um i i definitely agree i feel like if your doctor is not giving you what you need if they're not answering the questions, I think that's important. Like, I feel like any doctor that you vet, ask them questions because you'll mm -hmm. know where you stand. You'll know right. if they brush you off and aren't answering your questions, they probably aren't even the best doctor to start with. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah, for sure. I get like, that. And I wanna talk about your growth. Um, you talked about how this show has changed you and you didn't really know you needed it. Let's talk about that growth. Let's talk about what you got from it that you felt like you needed. Yeah, so um, before the show, I kind of felt like I was like, this is Sydney, like, you know, I'm doing well, I'm doing good, mentally I'm good. But going on this show, like I learned a lot of things about myself um, that I feel like I was aware of, but I kind of just put in a box and like put it under the bed. Um, so I really learned that, or I guess like relearned how much of a perfectionist I am. Um, and I also learned that it's okay to go through traumatic or negative things in your life. Cause that's really what contributes to the growth. So I guess with like my perfectionism, like I'm so used to, you know, sticking to a routine and like making my content a certain way and, always saying yes to events and press events and doing all these things. And it's like, I got to do this and blah, blah, blah. like everything has to be perfect. And being on the show, that was something that really held me back was me overthinking and me feeling like I always have to be perfect. Um, so coming back home and like taking on this next chapter of my life, like I kind of like stepped back a little bit when it came to overthinking and feeling the need to always create perfect content I realized that if I just do things that are just genuine and authentic and that's the thing like even before the show like I would create stuff I'd wake up I would feel something it would be super genuine and I'd put it out into the world but I would like spend hours like overthinking and being like okay is this like the right way of saying this message like is this edit good is this cut good like I would spend so much time overthinking now it's just like this is who I am. This is my story. And I'm going to put it out. If people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. Um, and so I also learned too, like with that whole perfectionism thing, it's okay to say no. And it's okay to take time for yourself. Um, there's been so many times where mentally I'm not in the best headspace and I'll agree to going to like hosting an event or being at an event or doing PR when it's like, I really can't even function that day. And so I've learned like, it's okay to say no, it's okay to take care of yourself and your mental health. Um, so that's something that I really took away from the show. And I'm really thankful um, to have like rediscovered about myself and the whole thing with like making mistakes, I guess that falls into being a perfect perfectionist as well. Um, on the show, there was like, especially during the first dance battle, like I messed up and I just like, I remember like that day I was just like the whole se the whole season, actually, I was just like, I can't believe I messed up like weeks ago. Like, I can't believe I did that. And that was holding me back from being successful in the future. So just learning to accept my mistakes and, you know, knowing that it's not the end of the world and using those things as learning experiences, 
um, that's something that really um, I learned on the show. So just overall, like, just kind of taking a step back and like looking at myself and opening some of those like things that I thought, you know, I just closed the lid on and put away, like just reopening those things and discovering things about how to be a better Sydney. I love that. Thank you so much. Um, so I want to go back to your business and as an influencer, right? Outside of the reality show, outside of um, you know, Sydney as the, you know, the person, but the influencer Sydney is very transparent. And you said that you, you, you tell your fans, you're authentic. You don't really sugarcoat anything pretty much, you know, but sometimes that's hard. Sometimes mm -hmm. transparency is very, I mean, you're basically telling your story, your most intimate story to strangers. Mm -hmm. How does, how, what is that like? How does that feel? Um, at times it can be, it can give me a lot of anxiety. Um, like I was saying earlier, like, you know, you don't know how people are going to take it. You don't know if people are going to take it in, a, in the right way, take it in the wrong way. So at times it's hard, but honestly, I wouldn't trade doing that for anything in the world. Um, my whole purpose on social media is to really, really allow women, young, old, men, young, old, whoever it may be, to see my story, if they resonate with those things, great, and understand that they're not alone. I want them to understand that, like, I've been through some shit, if I can curse on here, <laughs> I've been through some things um, where, you know, I thought that it was, like, the end for me, and I thought I wouldn't pull through, and I did, and I'm successful because of those things, and I've grown because of those things. I just really want people to see themselves on my page and really resonate with that and grow from that. And I guess too, like the way I grew up, like I never, I grew up in a very white community. Um, I, again, only black plus size cheerleader where there was like size zeros around me. Like I never felt seen. Um, and I really just want people to feel seen and feel heard. I want people to see a curvy girl, a curvy brown skin girl, um, on a billboard and see that on my feed and be like, wow, I can do that. So I guess it's just really like, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Um, I feel like I found my why and I really just want to continue to push that and allow people to be seen. I love that. And you talked about being a cheerleader. I feel like your story, and it's crazy that you said that you, you know, your story looks like other people. And that's why you want to be so you want to be out there and tell it your story looks like mine. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a white community, predominantly white community. I was a cheerleader. I was one of the only cheerleaders, you know, and it's, it's scary how everything that you're saying, like, I feel like a lot of times you feel like you're alone. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're the only one that has this story. You're the only one that feels this way. And, right. you know, it's, it's refreshing, honestly, to hear someone who, who has done it, conquered it, is still conquering it and as like doing the damn thing, girl, you know? So I, I just, it's awesome. And I do want to talk about your journey in high school um, because you've been very, I mean, I think that was the first story I heard was mm -hmm. the, the um the story about you being in high school and being uh with people that, didn't really understand you. I know people, I mean, I feel like when you're tall and you're curvy and you're, you know, you look different, it's like, oh, you're big. Oh, you need to lose weight. Oh, you're this. And it's like, oh my gosh, like, why can't I be me? So I'd okay. love for you, Sydney, I'd love for you to give a message to young girls who see this video, are struggling with body positivity, have been through body shaming, and needs some type of motivation. Yeah, um, so my whole motto in life is to live life as the main character. And what that really means is just <laughs> understanding that you are in full control of your life. Like you're in full control of who you surround yourself by, your happiness, your success, you're in full control of that. So 
Also, I want the younger generation or whoever's watching this to understand that we have one life. Um, so we need to live it to the fullest. We need to live it as the main character because there were so many times growing up where I struggled to love myself um, and I would miss out on so many amazing, beautiful things growing up. Like, you know, going to the pool or beach days with my friends or hanging out with certain people because of what other, I thought other people are gonna say. Don't let people, strangers, society whoever it may be let you miss out on beautiful moments in life because by the time you're my age if it's in high school by the time you're 60 if it's back in the day you're going to look back and be like I don't even remember those people and why did they have such a hold on on my life and how I viewed myself so live your life fully for you and for you to enjoy and live your life as the main character because at the end of the day you're the star of your show I love that thank you so much Absolutely. and Outside of that, the, you know, well, it's not even outside, it's related to it. We're in a world of women who change their bodies. You know, we're in a world of BBLs and it's no shame to BBLs because these girls look good, okay? Um, <laughs> but for those who can't afford it, don't want it, or want to just embrace their natural bodies, like, does it make it harder for you when you have to, for better words, and that's the only word I can really think of is like compete when you, on a social media feed with people who have those advantages, I would say. Um, I don't think so necessarily because I'm aware like trends change so often, like, and I don't necessarily think like getting a BBL is a trend. Like I know, you know, a lot of like we said a lot of people do it and they look good but it's like you got to think back to like the 2000s like what was the desired body type then right. and it just changes consistently so I feel like um it kind of just like it makes it easier in a way because it's like I'm literally just telling people like the truth on like what it is I'm telling I'm being honest with people like things are gonna change so often that it just makes it so much easier just to own who you are and own yourself. Like tomorrow or next month, next week, it could be like, oh, super thin as in, like no hips, no booty, like nothing. And then it's like, you know, it's just, just be yourself. Like things are gonna change so often and like really, really learn to embrace your body, learn to embrace who you are. Because if you remind yourself, like that's the most special and unique thing about yourself, is that nobody else looks like you right. like it's really a blessing it's really so special and so beautiful to know like there's not another like copy of sydney like this is this yeah. is it i'm an original like exactly. you can't get anything like this so um yeah i think you know it's it just really it doesn't make it hard it just kind of like makes it i guess like reasonable in a way like you know things are going to change and you are who you are and just own it right yeah I agree um we talked about a little bit about you being a plus size model um how'd you even get into it like where did you was it the same thing people just reached out to you and you started that or was it the same story I think it was the shade room honestly really? so <laughs> yeah when when that video came out like I think it got like 4 million views. And I just remember like days after that, like my following skyrocketed and I had um, like BET reach out and like reality shows like reach out and the natural models LA reached out and they were like, hey, are you signed to an agency yet? And I was like, oh my gosh, I definitely saw the video. And so they just DM me, we had a Zoom call and I actually think the head agent at the time was like, yeah, we saw your video on the shade room. Like you're amazing. And I was like, oh my gosh, shout out to the shade room. And then it just kicked off from there. But I think too, like, you know, I really thank my agency, but a lot of the, the great things that have happened in my career and bookings has been based off of being my true and authentic self on social media. Um, it's We're in such a beautiful time where the industries are changing and these brands are more aware of inclusion and diversity to where it's like, this is our time. So if you're wanting to be a plus size model, like this is your time. Like yeah. people are really starting to open their eyes and realize like there's a need for us and 
we can rock things just as well as a girl that's a size two or a size zero. So um, yeah, like me being my authentic self and, you know, posting that on social media, um, brands have like really been attracted to that and, you know, doing campaigns that are based off of loving yourself and body equality and self-love. So um, that's why I like to remind my followers and supporters as well, like being yourself can take you so far and you will be your happiest being yourself. Um, because again, like in the beginning of my influencer journey, I was so stuck on doing what everybody else was doing because I saw it was successful for them. And I was so depressed. I was so miserable. It wasn't sustainable for me. Um, so yeah, just being myself and like telling my truth and my story on social media has really been what's like brought in a lot of the bookings like Miami Swim Week and Vogue and these different things, Old Navy, all of those things. So um, just, yeah, really being myself has, has helped with that. Okay. And then and the help of the shade room, of course. Period. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out. Um, do you still, well, I guess my question is like, I, I wonder as a plus size model, is there still things that people feel like you need to look like, you know, I mean, I know it's not like you don't have to look like, you know, different other models, but like as a plus size model, is there a certain criteria that they, they kind of keep you in a box or is it a little bit more relaxed? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So that's why I love being a curve model, a plus size model. Like I, my weight still fluctuates all the time. Like when I'm traveling, like I'll gain a lot of weight because I'm like having a good time. I'm eating when I'm home right. or on my like regular eating plan and I'm working and all of those things. So my weight fluctuates a lot. Right. And, um, you know, that's what I really love about being a curve model is you're curvy. You're like, you're required to fit like curvy girl clothes. So it's like, you know, it's a lot more relaxed. It's a lot more, um, you know, acceptable than straight size modeling is and, and open. And um, yeah, so it's it's not as uptight as like, you know, modeling is where it's like, you have to stay this size or, yeah. you know, you're not gonna get booked anymore. Um, so, which I really, really appreciate about the industry. Um, I have noticed though, as an African-American, a uh, model as a African-American plus model, like the hair thing has been something that's really um, been concerning to me. Mm -hmm. I have worked on amazing sets like NYX Cosmetics and Rue 21, where they have black hair stylists on set that not only know how to style our hair, but know how to take care of our hair. Right. And there's other times where I'll go on set where, you know, they won't let me embrace my natural hair and they'll just like blow dry it without heat protection and like throw it back and then put a wig on and nice. call it a day. Um, so that's something that, you know, I feel like we need to see growth in when it comes to, um, you know, having black hairstylists or makeup artists on set that really understand how to work with black hair and how to make it look good and how to protect it as well because I personally lost a lot of my natural hair um because of you know being on set where it's just like you know not knowing how to take care of it um so that's something that I really hope I be changing in the future but um yeah we'll just have to see so tell me a little bit about this verbiage because what like they're straight there's straight models, there's uh, curve models, there's plus size, there's, what, what words do we use? Tell yeah, me. so um, yeah, it's still kind of confusing to me too, but um, like a straight size model is like your traditional model that you've seen since back in the day where it's like um, more along the lines of kind of like, I don't know how to describe the body type, but just like straight size, like size double zero to, I think it's like a size eight now maybe, or um, maybe a size 10, but that might be curvy. That's, it just like, it just depends on like your body type, I guess. I'm considered curvy now um, because I have the curves, I have the hips, I have the butt, I have the extra hoopa in the front, plus size. Girl, your body is bomb, okay? <laughs> I love my little Fupa. She's so cute. 
Um, <laughs> but then there's like plus size, which is more along the line. Like I'm a large to an extra large. Plus size is more once you get to the like extra, extra large, 2X, 3X, 4X. So um, yeah, it just depends. Like some brands still call me a plus size model. Sometimes I can fit straight size clothing. Sometimes I can even fit plus size clothing. So it just depends on the brand really. It's interesting that you say that because I feel like there was a time where big and plus size was considered triggers, you know, like those words triggered a lot of women and mm-hmm. men. And so do you think that the industry has reclaimed those words? I do. I really do think so. I I also think like Lizzo talked about this the other day and um, or like not the other day, like a few months ago at South by Southwest, she was the keynote speaker and she was asked like these words like fat and plus size and big, like they used to at a time be like really triggering for women. Right. And Lizzo had a great response and she was basically just like, you know, it's really how you take the word, like how you take the verbiage. Like me, if somebody calls me fat, I'm like, yeah, my my booty is fat and I love it (laughs) and you know what I mean but I feel like now like you know we're gonna consistently have labels placed on us um and I think if you just kind of accept that like that's how it is that's the world we live in um it can't really like affect you or trigger you but I do feel like these brands have like you know recreated a different meaning behind these words Mm -hmm. like when you say plus size like I automatically think of like Tabria Majors plus size model like Tess Holiday. And I'm like, oh, yes, like yeah. curvy, sexy, like successful. So I really do think that, you know, the world has changed what the perspective of that word is or the perception of that word is. Um, and I'm happy. Like I, when I hear full figured, when I hear plus size, right. when I hear curvy, like it just automatically is like, she's a baddie. Like I already know and I don't even have to see her. Hey, yeah. Yes. So what's next for Sydney? Like, what are you getting into next? What are your goals? What do you want to get into? Yeah, so I'm really excited to announce. I'm not going to say the name yet, but just keep okay. y'all's eyes open. I am starting a clothing line. And um, I'm not going to spe- specify what type of clothing yet, but I'm really excited about that. It is very size inclusive, all size inclusive. Um, and it's going to be something really on brand for me and exciting and the girls are gonna love it. I'm really, really excited to get that started. Um, and I honestly am somebody that doesn't really set goals for myself. And that's the crazy part is like this whole journey of like starting in 2017 as like working with like one or two brands to now like being a reality star and being on billboards and being a model. It's like, I never planned any of it. Like I didn't even care or want to be a model at a specific time. I didn't even want to be an influencer at a specific time. So it's like, that's why I just kind of like let myself like go with the flow. Um, I do what makes me happy. And that's when really the blessings start to flow in. So the, as of just right now, I have this clothing line that's going to come out. It's going to okay. launch on my birthday, June 17th. Okay. Um, I really need a vacation. Okay. <laughs> I need some time to just kind of like step back and enjoy uh, life and, you know, but um, I'm, I've been doing social media and modeling consultations for girls, which has really been awesome to see their growth, um, not just like growing their following, but doing more beyond Instagram and, you know, modeling and stuff like that. So just living and loving hard and just enjoying life is what's really next for me and seeing what comes this was is there a boo in sydney's future like does sydney have a boo we don't know girl (laughs) i guess the world will never know (laughs) period (laughs) i keep it a secret i understand yeah i i do have a a boyfriend um he's he's awesome he's my best friend um so yeah, he's very supportive too of like what I do, which is really awesome. Like I've been in so many relationships as Sydney L. Bell and, you know, people not, they can't always like handle it or they get like weird when I start doing things for myself. He's just like, yeah, you gotta go to LA. You gotta go to New York, do your thing. I'll yeah, do you like, girl. Yeah. Which is just really awesome to have. So yeah, I'm really happy. 